Hello everyone and welcome to the open day for the UL Diploma and Graduate Diploma in Creative Computing program. My name is Georgina Caldavilla and I'm the Creative Learning Producer at the Creative Computing Institute. And today we are here to share all about the UAL and Graduate Diploma provision. And in order to do that, we will have with us Matthew Ploma Fernandez and Murad Khan, who are the course leaders of the program. We will also have Finn and Naomi, two current students at the course, and Stacy, who is a diplomat student who will graduate from her original course this year after completing the year in diploma uh, in 2020. To give you an overview of the session and how it's structured, we're going to start talking about CCI first, the spaces, facilities and resources which are available to students. Then we are going to share an overview of the key research theme, social mission and public program of the Institute. And lastly, Murat and Matthew will talk us through the approach and content that the Diploma in Creative Computing course entails. Right after that, we're going to have the pleasure to invite Stacey Finn and Ayomi to join us live. So we can jump straight into the Q&A section and we will go through all the questions that we received from all of you, but we will also keep an eye on the chat. So if there's anything else that you would like us to cover or that you would like us to talk about during the session, feel free to use the, the YouTube chat during the presentations. Also, if you have difficulties following along the session, know that the entire session will be recorded and re-uploaded to CCI's YouTube channel with English closed clap captions. So please don't worry if you miss any detail because you'll have the opportunity to catch up at your own pace too. So let's get this started. We'll begin by watching a video that my colleague Chloe Dunn recorded, which will tell you all about the CCI. Thanks everyone for watching. We'll see you in a bit. Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to show you around the campus and share some of the facilities and resources available to CCI students. The Creative Computing Institute is located at UAL's Peckham Road campus in Camberwell, South East London. From 2022, we'll have two new sites open in the Camberwell Peckham area. The Greencoat building opening in January will be used for teaching, technical and office spaces. Eagle Wharf will open in September and will provide a new halls of residence building for UAL students alongside a community outreach, events and exhibition space. Camberwell is a lively and unique area of South East London with good transport links to all parts of the city, including Brixton and Dalston. And we have three halls of residence that are all within walking distance of the CCI. The local area is home to a thriving art scene which hosts a variety of art galleries and artist studios that students, graduates and staff work and exhibit in. On site, we have two galleries, Camberwell Space and the Students' Union Gallery, with the South London Gallery right next door. Arts organisation Bull Tendencies runs an annual programme of live events and commissions, as well as hosting Frank's Bar on the Roof, with some of the best London views in the city. So here I've just named a few, but there are so many more galleries, cultural hubs and recreational spaces for you to explore that are right on our doorstep. To find out more about the local area, visit the Living in London page on the UAL website. On campus, we have many facilities and spaces for you to use. Our canteen has lots of food and drink options for everyone, with bike storage situated just outside. We have an art shop that offers affordable art supplies and whose staff can help advise you on the best materials for your project. Also on site, we have an amazing library supported by a dedicated CCI librarian who oversees the subject area of creative computing. She ensures the library stays up to date with the books, periodicals, databases and other resources you need to complete your studies. The Learning Zone is part of the library and is situated on site in the Gardens Halls of Residence building. It's open 24 hours a day, meaning that you can study at a time that best suits you and they have a range of equipment for you to use and laptops available to learn. To find out more about the spaces and facilities available to you, please visit wiki.cci.arts.ac.uk. Now let's take a look around. The CCI is located across the fourth and fifth floors in block B at Peckham Road and is very accessible to students with various needs. Our lecture theatre is in the basement of block B. This space is used for lectures as well as events. 
The fourth floor is used mostly for postgraduate teaching. Here, we have a new seminar room and a room which will house our laser cutter and some 3D printers too. The fifth floor is the heart of CCI. Our kitchen is a communal space as well as a learning space. At lunchtime, it becomes a social hub for CCI folks to share lunch together. And during classes, it's a quiet working space. We have pods which can be used when they are not booked as quiet spaces to work and a space to have your tutorials. Alongside are three classrooms, two seminar rooms and one high-end computer suite fitted with some of the latest technology, including 24 high-spec computers with NVIDIA RTX 2080 graphics cards and 4K monitors for working on projects ranging from machine learning to 3D rendering and video editing. Additionally, many of these computers can be accessed remotely from home after hours to enable access to specialist software or the high performance for rendering or machine learning work. We also operate a laptop locker system where students can borrow a laptop to use within the CCI spaces. The physical computing lab is a space for students to do all of their electronics. Here, we have everything students will need for soldering and testing things out. We have hundreds of different components which are available for you to use. There is also a sewing machine, embroidery machine, computerised knitting machine and 3D printers. This is just a glimpse of some of the amazing facilities and resources you'll have access to while studying at CCI. Hello again, I hope that was useful. Right, so a lot of students are also interested in finding out more about the opportunities, workshops, events that they would have the chance to take part in while studying at CCI. So the next video I'm going to play will give you an overview about CCI's key research themes, the social mission that is embedded throughout all the teaching and research and activities that we organize and the public program of events and workshops and intensive courses that uh, will be available to you as well. We'll see you in a second. Enjoy. Hello, everyone. My name is Georgina Cadevilacano, and I am the creative learning producer at CCI. And my role focuses on planning and delivering CCI's public program, which I will briefly talk about in the next few minutes. Our public program is a platform that offers accessible learning experiences, workshops, and events to literally anyone interested in getting a taste about creative competing or deepen their knowledge in the field. This program of activities is underpinned by CCI's three key research themes, which are creativity, machine learning and AI, human computer interaction and platforms, big data and digital citizenship. The public program also responds to CCI's social mission aimed at integrating computational thinking with approaches to fairness and equality for the UL community and beyond. Therefore, all our programs have a strong focus on diversity in technology, digital inclusion and digital entrepreneurship. We are committed to connecting students, practitioners and researchers with an international community of artists and technologists and where everyone can explore creative technology through fun and friendly and most of all accessible spaces. To give you a sense of what you have the chance to take part in while you're studying at CCI, I will just share quickly some of the programs that we've run in the past. At Technology and Powers Intensive Workshop and Public Symposium last year, we learned about human rights, internet technology regulations, and alternative techno futures with Dr. Pixcraft and an amazing group of researchers, artists, activists, and advocates. At Tech for All conference, CCI staff members shared how we can creatively reimagine the way we use and design new technologies to create platforms, interactions, experiences, spaces, and products that bring people together in community, respect, beauty, and solidarity. At Querying Voice AI Intensive Course, a mix of UAL students explored how voice interfaces could be designed to support the embodied well-being of trans and non-binary people. And finally, they prototyped SIP a voice interface that connects trans and non-binary users to media created by their community. 
And last but not least, at Tech Yard, we keep creating a safe space for young kids in the local area of Peckham and Camberwell to learn about creative computing with Jasmine Morris and many other CCI staff and students. These are just a few of the activities that we've been running over the last few years, but there's a lot of free, accessible, and interesting content in our YouTube channel, which I would love to invite you to check out at some point. For this next academic year, just so you have a taste as well of what's going on, we're working on a lot of different activities, which will include a couple of intensive workshops that will be open to all UAL and CCI students. We will also run a fellowship program on the field of experimental human-computer interaction. And there are many, many things that are on the way that we can't wait to share with you. As a CCI student, know that you will have the opportunity to be part of all these spaces and to meet other peers from across UAL and beyond. But this will be a safe space for you to explore your creative career, your creative practice alongside students coming from different courses, different levels and different programs that will for sure nurture your own views, your own perspectives and your own skill set. So I hope that this got you excited about joining CCI and we can't wait to share spaces with you in the future. Thanks a lot for your time. Goodbye for now. Hope you found that useful. Now it's time for us to start talking about the UAL Diploma and Graduate Diploma in Creative Computing, which is the reason why we're all here today. So it's a huge pleasure to invite into this uh, core, into this stream uh, Murat Khan and Matthew Ploma Fernandez, who are both the course leaders of this provision. So let me add Murat and Matthew here. Hello. I think you're both muted. Yes, hello. <laughs> hey, Matthew. Hey, Murat. We can't hear you, Murat, I think. Maybe it's just me. We can't hear you still. Let me see. Maybe check your mic settings. It was working before, so I'm sure we'll We'll sort it out. Apologies, everyone. We did we did a tech check just to make sure that this didn't happen. <laughs> this is live, so these things these things happen all the time. Just bear with us. Do you want to just try and um, exit the stream, Murat, and you can join again? See what happens. Amazing. We'll take a couple of minutes only. I wish we had some elevator music there, Matthew. It's not the yeah, case. Sorry. I was not ready for that. <laughs> Hopefully he'll be back soon. Okay, he's joining now. Let's try. Hey, Murat. Can you hear me now? Yes, it's working. Amazing. Oh, <laughs> we sorted like, it out. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing like a technology presentation without technology failing on you uh, just when you need it. It <laughs> wouldn't be the same. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much for joining us, Matthew and Murat. Um, I'll just leave you to it. So the floor is yours. <laughs> Fantastic. Hi, everyone. Sorry about that. So I'm just going to share my screen and hopefully you can all see the presentation that we've got up here today. Um, Matthew and I are really excited to talk about the diploma and graduate diploma in creative computing to you all today. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to answer a lot of the questions you have, as well as get a bit of discussion going with our students so you can get insight into what it is we do on the diploma and what it's like to be on it. So as Georgina said, Matthew and myself are your course leaders for the diploma. Uh, we cover tutorials, pastoral care, help with your projects, overseeing the units, and just generally running the course and making sure everything is going smoothly for you all. Um, if you've got any questions about applying for the diploma or providing a personal statement, you can feel free to email us, um, and our email addresses are here, and I think Georgina will probably share those as well later. Okay, we're really gonna run you through uh, what the diploma is all about and the kinds of things you're gonna be doing on the course. So for those of you who don't know anything about the diploma, 
Uh, it's a one year long experiment for those of you who want to explore the price of creative computing in your practice. Uh, so whether this is learning how to code, whether it's building interactive machines or physical computing, hardware or sculptures, or you're interested in a research-based practice which takes a critical look at some emerging trends in technology, we cover a really broad range of things in the diploma. Um, and more importantly, the diploma is something different from a boot camp. It's not a kind of intensive course in which you'll be taught just the fundamentals of programming and you'll go away and become a software engineer. The CCI, we're really invested in thinking about how programming can fit into creative practice and how humanities students and those of you from an arts background can mix with this new kind of technologies like machine learning or like 3D modeling or video game engine design um, and think about how your practice will change and what new models for artistic practice and artistic uh, teaching uh, we can have for the future. And the crucial thing about the diploma is that you meet people from across the whole range of UAL. We've got students from graphic design, fashion, fine art, sculpture, sound art, everyone is on this course. Um, and you're bound to meet new people to collaborate with, friends with, and network with generally. We've tried to address a couple of things on this presentation for you. Um, questions you might have about coming from your original course, uh, what happens to your original degree, uh, does this impact upon your degree and the grade you get impact upon what you'll be awarded at the end. We're hopefully gonna try and assuage any worries you have uh, during this time. So in general, uh, you will rejoin your original degree upon completion of the diploma. So the grade you get on the diploma won't affect your original undergraduate degree. It will just be added to your transcript. And you'll also continue to have access to all of the workshops and uh, physical facilities at your home college. If you're at CSM, LPC, Camberwell, all of these will still be available to you. But you'll also have access to a lot of the equipment available to you at CCI. There's a wide range of facilities, uh, such as the dedicated electronics lab you saw earlier, and these 24 high-spec computers uh, with high-spec GPUs and 4K monitors to use, as well as learnable MacBook Pros, VR headsets, and a laser cutter. You'll also have access to the wide range of facilities available at Camberwell, uh, such as student services, IT support, disability services, student union and an exhibition space. For the rest of this presentation, we're gonna to try to run you through what it is that this, you'll do on the diploma. So moving from when you join in September, all the way up until you have your graduation show in June. And so at the diploma, we're split into two blocks rather than term units. The first block runs from September all the way into January. and the second block runs from February all the way into June. And we have three different units per block, which you'll get to explore, learn about programming, learn about computational futures and physical computing. Um, which you, uh, and in the second block, you will learn to code with Swift, the collaborative act development, uh, computational environments, which includes Unreal, Blender, Unity, and work in the digital creative industries, which introduces to you the place of creative practice and computational practice in the modern world. So I'll just hand over to Matthew now to talk through one of our units, which is on creative coding. Hi, thank you, Marit. So yes, my name's Matthew Plummer Fernandez. I'm the other uh, course leader on the diploma. Um, and this unit, creative computing, sorry, creative coding on computational frameworks, uh, introduces you to programming languages and concepts um, mostly around interaction and design within the browser so using javascript as well as open frameworks you'll learn to make um, interactive apps um, interactive graphics generative graphics um, and this this unit really uh, starts you from the basics understanding some of the mathematical concepts behind uh, these processes to to going through examples um, through workshops and and uh, classes and 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 workshops to develop a kind of a strong basis that will serve you for the rest of the diploma as well. And some of the things that you might get to build, for example, on this unit would be 
uh, generative patterns for textiles. You might make a custom drawing robot or simulate artificial life. Thank you. Um, the second unit you'll explore in block one is computational futures, which takes you through a kind of critical introduction to machine learning and AI and thinking about the way in which it impacts both creative practice and culture more broadly, and the way in which these kinds of technologies are becoming increasingly embedded in our social infrastructure. And you'll learn this through a mix of both practical and physical um, experiments, creating image classification systems, generative networks for text to image generation, or explore critical research projects on the future of machine learning and its impact on the future of work, for example. And the primary aim we want to have here is to enable you to look past the kind of hype of AI and see what's really at the heart of it and see how you can engage with AI as part of creative practice. And on the third unit that you'll be doing in concurrent, um, concurrent to those other two units is physical computing. Uh, this is a very hands-on, practice-based, in-person um, chance to get familiar with electronics, mostly around using the Arduino. And so you'll be able to build things that um, use um, LEDs, uh, use actuators, use sensors to create small electronic prototypes. Um, and on this, on this unit, you'll have a chance to sort of develop your own projects as well. Um, so some of the things that you might build uh, on this unit would be a sculpture that responds to uh, a viewer's touch or proximity. You might want to build a custom musical instrument or a custom mouse that responds to different kinds of inputs. Then when we come back after the winter break and we start block two, we'll start a whole new set of modules or units, um, which will really build on the skills that you learned in the first term. So a kind of introduction to programming, the fundamentals, and you'll start to see how what you've learned can be transferred through different languages, and different domains. Uh, one example of this is our unit on coding for collaborative app development, which teaches you how to code in Swift and Swift UI, and how to build a cross-platform iOS and macOS app. And you'll learn what it means to work inside a team, a design team working on these kind of softwares, and how to ship them and put them on the App Store and create something that the public can use as well. Um, on computational uh, environments, you'll be looking at how to use 3D modeling software, um, games engines, and, and be introduced to uh, game engines such as Unity and Unreal and working in Blender uh, for producing things in CGI. And um, this has a number of applications. This is useful towards making immersive world building installations, interactive augmented reality experiences, and uh, even touching upon virtual reality. Um, and and uh, yeah, some of the other things that you might want to build is, you know, this is also relevant towards building sculpture, and 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 uh, prototype video games as well. Have we lost Murad? Okay, I'll I'll introduce this one, and then uh, finally the other units will be work and digital creative units, uh, creative industries. Um, in this one, you'll be looking at different ways in which the sort of skills and and the types of practice that you're introduced to and develop on the diploma um, can 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 manifest in, in different industries. So for instance there's futures in in in, in design, in being a creative technologist and being a generative artist. And and to support this we'll go on on studio visits, we'll have guest lectures. Uh, so it's really about sort of thinking about um, your future beyond the diploma. Okay, and finally, if, if you're interested in applying for the diploma, you just need to prepare a personal uh, statement uh, with the option to do a portfolio.
So a successful application would tell us about your interests, both in respect to computing and your current program. Um, we're looking for a broad range of people from those who already maybe have digital or computing background or or maybe just want to really try and, and hone those skills and combine it with your existing practices. And if you do have any questions, please reach out to Marita and myself. We'd be happy to answer your emails. Great, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Matthew. Thank you, Murat. I think we lost Murat, but I'm sure he'll be back in a second. In the meantime, what we could do is to invite the students onto the stream and just hear from from them so it's a huge pleasure to invite stacy finn and naomi hello everyone hello hi, hi. thanks so much for joining us and murad is back yes we're all here now hey murad so sorry everyone I, it's not my evening is all i can say <laughs> it's all good we made it all here beautiful so before we start with our questions it would be really nice to hear from from all of you who just joined us now so maybe just doing a quick round of intros would be really nice to hear from what course you come from or what background you come from or where you're at at the moment after completing the diploma stacy do you want to start yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm Stacey. I did the first diploma, uh, so the guinea pig stage. Uh, and then I went back on to my uh, degree, which was uh, textile design. So this year I graduated with a, well, it's called textile design with creative computing. So, yeah. Thank you, Stacey. Naomi, do you want to go next? Hi, everyone. I'm Naomi um, from graduate diploma in creative computing. And actually, I came from a liberal arts background and study visual communication design at university. Thank you, Naomi. Fendi, we're going to go next. Yeah, I'm also currently a student on the diploma, um, but I'm doing it as a sandwich year between my second and third year. Um, and I study graphic communication design at Central St. Martins. Mm. Lovely. Thanks everyone for joining us today. It will be amazing to, to hear from your own experience. So we're going to start with the questions that we received and we're going to go along with all the, yeah, the ones that we've collected. But again, if you have any other questions, just feel free to post them on the chat. So we're going to start with the first one we received, which you can see at the bottom of the, of the screen, hopefully. And this first one says, I'm wanting to start a career in 3D fashion. Is this course worthwhile for the career path I want to follow? Who would like to take this one? Maybe Matthew or Murad, would you say a few words of encouragement there? Yeah, I'd be happy to. I mean, absolutely, this is, this is worthwhile for the career path you want to follow. The diploma will give you a whole host of insight on in how you can explore computational practice and the intersection with fashion. So whether this is creating uh, 3D garment design, working with textiles or smart fabrics in a physical computing unit, whether this is working with machine learning algorithms and generative networks to model new uh, items of clothing or create speculative runway items. You know, there's a whole host of ways in which the uh, creative coding um, can really fit into fashion. So I, I think you're in a good place. Thank you, Murat. I guess it would be nice to hear from you, Stacey, as well, from your experience just blending creative computing with fashion and textiles in this case. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's definitely the place to do it, especially if you're doing the diploma year where you're sandwiching in between, because it's the perfect space to try something new. So if you're thinking you're like halfway through your degree and you think, you know, I want to explore this area, the diploma is a great chance to just try it out and see if you do like it with minimal risks you've kind of just got all that time to test try it you might find out actually you want to go into a different area of comp creative computing or that is actually what you want to do so i would definitely recommend it and smart textiles are fabulous and very fascinating and digital fashion is like the way it's going so yeah definitely do it. thank you so much stacy beautiful so moving on we've got another question here that says, how can my individual practice expand with creative competing? Which is a great question. And I guess everyone will have a different answer to this as well. So do you wanna maybe share some of your experience, Finn, 
how how has this like new practice just expanded your own views yeah sure i think um it's an interesting one because i had already had a unit that was on like computational thinking so without the specific practical parts of like coding up a program um but thinking about how you might go about that um and sort of translating what you want to do to make the machine understand it um but i think for me like so much actually what Stacey said, having the space to experiment in an environment that is is not so um, outcome oriented has been really, really helpful. So it's allowed me to kind of slow down and think, OK, well, what's the best way to do this? What would like what's within my means of what I can create? And then also what would be the best version of this possible um, and really opened me up to to what's possible in terms of um making things hardware design and software stuff um it's taken me outside of just like oh you code something you put it on a computer screen they control it with a mouse and a keyboard um it's really opened up the kind of space for interaction that i've enjoyed quite a lot nice thank you finn thanks for sharing would you like to add something there naomi as well from your experience yeah um frankly speaking uh uh i I was completely unsure of myself when I first came to CCI because I saw it was a course that was completely out of my undergraduate degree and maybe a new field for me. But then I just realized that it wasn't quite like that. Yeah, it's like at CCI, it's like teaching you how to integrate modern and technology with art and the creative rules are the same, but the medium is newer. And I think that's kind of the future, you know. Thank you, Naomi. That's great to hear from you. Lovely. Okay, I think the next question ties very well with what we're discussing here as well. And it's something that we get a lot, which is, do I need to know any coding to apply? Well, let's go for this one. I mean, my straightforward answer is no. Um, we're here to take you from absolutely nothing, if that's where you're at, or something, or all the way. Uh, whatever stage you're at, we're really here to meet you there and hopefully expand your practice, expand the way in which you're thinking about computing and the ways in which you're thinking about using computing and creative technology together. Um, and our students, probably Finn, Naomi, and Stacey as well, to some degree, if you probably know if you come with little coding experience, it's, we try and build you up bit by bit. Um, and um, over the course of the year, you'll really get to grips with it. Nice one. Yeah. Thank you, Moira. I was just going to say, I think there's also like uh, an attitude within coding that isn't like other parts of the creative industry and that there's lots of stuff that's open source there's lots of stuff that's shared like it's totally okay to have like half of your code 90 percent of your code be nicked from another project like it's all about like oh just say that that's what they did <laughs> um and it's about kind of combining other people's ideas um to to make things that are actually within the scope of things you can create um it's not like sort of in the films where they sit down and they just code and it works the first time. Like you're going to try something and have to do it over and over and over again. Um, and working with other people's code and people by and large are really, really kind of kind and generous with the work that they've made. Um, and like I said, have a lot of open source stuff. So it's not a case of you start from scratch every time, you write it out and it all has to be perfect and work the first time. It's sort of a process of piecing together other projects um, to make something that works for you. Thank you, Finn. That's great to hear. And Stacey, what was your experience like starting to code? Did you know anything about coding before you joined the diploma? Other than like using MySpace back in the day, no. So I was pretty much beginner. I do think, and that was fine and I could totally muddle through it, but I was perhaps one of the weaker coders, but I think, for me, if I could do it again, I definitely would spend a little bit of time just getting like a few more basics um, together just for like personally my own confidence. But it depends how your brain works. My brain does not get coding completely at the start. I'm getting there now, but um, it takes a bit of time. But 
as Finn was saying, like the community is so kind and open and everyone always wants to help you. And I found the community at CCI as well, like fellow students would help you. No one would kind of like leave you behind. So yeah, don't panic, it will be fine. Thanks for sharing that lovely message, Stacey. And on that front as well, is there any resources that you would like to share with prospective students who are thinking about joining the course and that maybe would benefit from knowing, you know, what sort of like YouTube channels to check out or books, or is there something that you all could share on that front? I think that would really benefit people here. Um, I definitely recommend, recommend the coding train. Um, he annoys the hell out of me, but <laughs> he's, he explains things really, really well. Um, and that's for like the first unit that we do for like our create, actual creative coding stuff is uh, in a program called p5.js. So it's JavaScript um, and Dan Schiffman, the guy who runs the coding train, does this really, really great kind of uh, basics projects where you you kind of just build from the ground up and he sort of puts thing in, put things in bits by bit so you can understand it in chunks. Um, and he's also not, um, he doesn't talk down to you at all, which is really nice. Because <laughs> I think there's sort of, I don't know, sometimes there's an energy of uh, bro coders being like, oh, it has to be hard, you have to do it the hard way, when that's not the case at all. Um, so yeah, I think Coding Train P5 is a really, really good place to start. And you don't have to download anything. It runs through your browser, so you just have it online. Um, it's a really, really good place to start. I would also say, you know, for anyone who's coming and worried, you know, if they don't know enough about coding to begin with, we've got a fantastic technical team who's there to help you with any problems you might have, whether it's Arduino um, and physical computing, whether it's thinking about machine learning, whether it's trying to integrate your practice with JavaScript and thinking about how you might use it on the web. You know, we've got a real host of people who can help you with almost any problem you've had. Half of us have had them before. Um, so you're not on your own as you go through and students always pitch together to help one another as well. Thank you for sharing that more as well, which brings us to the next question about what teaching and technical resources are available to CCI. So it would be nice to hear maybe from current students as well. What are the resources that you found the most helpful in your learning journey? or anything that you're really, you know, benefiting from being at CCI and which is supporting your, your studies. Who would like to, to share there? Yeah, I can. Um, I think having, so the program is run over Slack. Um, so there, it's really great having a platform that has literally the entire college on it. So, um, and we have a technical section of that where you can just type in and say like, hey, I'm using this, I'm having this kind of problem. Has anyone else run into this? Um, and the the technicians uh, that Marad mentioned, our really great tech team, are also on there to answer queries. Um, so for me, because I live in the north of London, um, so I only really commute into CCI for my actual in-person lessons. So having online support that is sort of really accessible um, is great. And it means also that um, you can set up uh, student study groups on there so if you're working on particular topics that you know other people are um, or even if just like someone in the master's course is doing something similar to you and they might put like oh I'm looking at this and you can be like oh I'm also looking at this so it's it really helps to make links across the community um, because at the end of the day like there are quite a few students at CCI now um, so it's nice to be able to link up in that way um, so I think really comprehensive online teaching is, is good. <laughs> That's amazing. Thanks, Finn. Someone else would like to add something there? In terms of the teaching and technical resources available. Amazing. We can move on. Also, I wanted to share here as well that we have a set of future learn courses which are free for everyone to access anytime. And we've done this in partnership with many other organizations that are doing a lot of impactful work. And there's like courses on designing a feminist chatbot, courses on introduction to machine learning. There's a lot of amazing stuff there that it's free again and super accessible. So feel free to check that. I think my colleague Rocio will, will share some of the details about these future learning courses on the chat. So yeah, just keep an eye because it's really worth um, 
that time just to learn some some new skills if you're interested amazing okay so moving on we've got a question that came through as well that says does the course explore virtual reality and what parts i think Murat or matthew you had an answer to this um yes well in the computational environments course we're going to be covering um the use of uh cgi and game engines and so this touches upon virtual reality it's not entirely dedicated to virtual reality but it's a um, a skill set that allows you to go into animation, gaming, virtual reality, augmented reality, and uh, we're going to sort of be looking at these things thematically as well. Lovely, thank you, Matthew. Amazing. And another one that I'm really looking forward to hearing the answers to what sort of work will I get to produce during the diploma? So, here, maybe Stacey, you could share a little bit about what you produced during the the year at the CCI? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there were, oh, there were a lot of projects. Uh, so my first one, I did a like a balloon uh, installation, digital installation, where every time you went, mm. the balloon would inflate in theory. It kind of didn't work in the end, but that doesn't matter. Uh, one of my other projects was a, I'm quite obsessed with dogs, so I made uh, this game where you had a dog hoop halo and it used like um, body tracking to catch the treats on the screen. Um, so yeah, there were like a lot of cool different projects. We also did a few ones with an Arduino. Um, and then also, I mean, I guess they are projects, but the writing that we also got to do was also really interesting. Um, getting to kind of research a bit more about computing in a more like academic, theory way was also really exciting for me as well so it's not just the making side of things there's also the theory side of stuff as well that's really interesting thank you stacy naomi or Finn, would you like to share a little bit about what you're working on currently at the course it would be great to hear Yeah, actually, I'm mainly working on a project for this semester, and uh, I just want to try to make a digital variable device using PFJIs in combination with Arduino. And yeah, yeah, I think that's it. Thank you, Naomi. Anything you would like to share, Finn, on that front? Uh, yeah. Um, well, we've. I'm trying to think. <laughs> we we just finished this week, uh, so we've got so we've got work to do over Christmas. Um, but we we're kind of on two fronts at the moment. We've got uh, a project that Naomi mentioned, which is uh, building some kind of interactive machine using Arduino. Um, so for that, I'm making. Uh, I do a lot of work at the moment with like drawing machines and interaction. Like I'm quite interested in collaboration with machines and that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, so I'm looking at different ways to uh, interact with machines other than just a mouse and keyboard. Um, so I'm making a couple different types of uh, like mouse prototypes. Um, when I say mouse, like different ways to move around uh, a cursor or an interactive point on the screen, um, which is, is super fun. Um, <laughs> To, to hopefully eventually work with some of my drawing machines. Um. Nice, thanks for sharing. And is there anything you would like to share, Matthew, more about like the upcoming maybe projects that students will be working on this year? Is there any type of work you would like to share here as well? Sure, I mean, the, the main thing students are gonna work towards next term is gonna be their graduate degree show, uh, which gives people who are on the diploma coming in that sandwich year, a kind of chance to see what it will be like when they go back, they have to produce something for their end of year show. Um, and it will give graduate diplomats also a chance to, to put on a show um, and really scale up a project that they've worked on throughout the whole year. So as I mentioned, our first term is really, you know, building out these concepts and getting you to learn about all of these new programming languages and frameworks and tools. But in the second term, you'll have a bit more time to kind of breathe and make work uh, and really build up to something that that you've maybe started on with your projects in the first term uh, something you had an idea for or something that didn't really work out uh, because you shot too far 
the, and then hopefully in the second term, you'll be able to kind of scale those a little bit and make something, you know, really, really special. Thank you, Murad. Yeah, that brought us to this other com uh, question that we had about whether the students will have their own graduation showcase after completing the diploma. And I know that Finn wanted to share something on that front as well. So feel free to take the mic. Uh, yeah, partially because like literally in the last couple of weeks, we've done our, we've like been talking to the students of, of our year group to see what they want to do with it, which I'm quite excited about because um, we have loads of freedom <laughs> of the way that we can actually curate the show, which I wasn't really expecting. So we can really, I feel like definitely in uh, graphics where I come from, we kind of, there's a uniform setup for like, this is the space where you show the work. If you want to set up something specific, it has to kind of still exist in the, within that space. Um, whereas I think partially because last year's showcase was online and they made some really, really cool stuff for that. Um, it gives us a, a lot of wiggle room about like, oh, cool, how do we actually want the showcase to look? And at the moment, we're thinking a lot about actually just fitting it to the kind of work that the students want to make, because obviously we come from such a wide uh, like spread of disciplines that people's outcomes are going to look really, really different. Um, so it's nice being able to really curate the spaces to the kind of work people think they're going to make. Um, and obviously that will keep kind of getting narrowed down the closer we get to people actually making their work. Um, but I think that's what's been really great for me so far, this thing of like, oh, your work doesn't just have to exist in like a white gallery box, or it doesn't have to exist just online or on the screen. There can be this kind of middle ground of how people see your work and in what spaces. Super interesting. Thanks for sharing that, Finn. And on that front as well, of course, for obvious reasons, we've had to run the, the shows online um, for the past two years. But yes, Stacey took part in the first one and we organized a sort of like show party on YouTube, which you can, by the way, watch anytime because it's um, already made available. So you have like the one graduating from 2020 and the one graduating from 2021. And yeah, the students did an amazing, an amazing job there. So yeah, feel free to watch that because it's, it's really cool. Um, that's great. Beautiful. Then we also, just moving on, we have questions about the application process. So I wanted to just take the time to go through how the process works and like um, key deadlines that you should uh, have into account. So as you may have seen already, there's the UL diploma route and the graduate diploma route, and they have separate um, ways of applying, right? So I'm gonna start with the UL diploma. The two deadlines that we have, uh, for the applications to go through are Friday the 18th of March 2022 and Friday the 10th of June 2022. The applications are rolling so it doesn't make a difference if you apply to uh, before the first deadline or the second but we really encourage you to apply as soon as as soon as you can to to make sure that the spaces don't fill up and what's needed as well as um, Matthew and, and Murat already uh, clarified during the presentation is a personal statement. Just tell us why you want to join the course and you are um, invited to, to share a link to a portfolio, but it's not mandatory. So just know that there's no such pressure in like providing a portfolio as in maybe other courses. And then in terms of the graduate diploma, so the deadlines are the same as any postgraduate courses. So you have the 12th of January, 2022. And the second deadline is on the 13th of April, 2022. Again, it's a rolling application, but we also encourage you to apply as soon as, as soon as you can, just to make sure that we have, you know, you, we have to go through some admissions processes sometimes and just check some documentation and all of that, uh, which might take time. So the sooner you can do the application, um, the better for, for everyone. And in terms of what to submit in the application for the graduate diploma, you will have to fill out uh, some, just provide some general details about yourself in a form. You have to submit a CV, a personal statement, just telling us why you want to, um, to join the course as well. And then we will contact you and ask you to provide a digital portfolio. Again, you have all the details on the CCI course page. So feel free to just go through all the information there if there's any doubt that you have about that. But I think that should be able to just cover the essentials about the application process. We did receive a uh, question about whether there are any tips for a good application. So maybe Murat or Matthew, you could share a little bit about 
what are we expecting to see in an application from, from a prospective student? Sure, yeah. Um, well, Matthew, do you want to? Yeah, I think we just got to, we, we want to see what your interests are, why you want to uh, apply for the diploma. Uh, we understand that you come from different backgrounds and you want to, um, you, you view um, creative coding through the lens of your own practice. So tell us, you know, what your background is, what you're interested in, and uh, and and that that's enough, really. Yeah, definitely. We really want to just bring people together with computing or creative computing as a base. You know, it doesn't matter what you're into now. It's about finding those synergies and synthesizing everything that you're into. You know, there's a whole world in which you know computing can touch on too. So anything and everything is fantastic. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Amazing. Then the next um, topic that we should cover here, because we've received a lot of questions about funding and fees as well. Um, we also received a few comments on, on YouTube as well. And what I'm going to say there is that um, I'm just going to refer back to the fees and funding team, basically, because things have changed quite a lot over the last year. And there's a specific team just committed to support students in whatever their personal situation is. So I think what I'm going to do now is ask my colleagues to just post on the chat the page for the fees and funding where you're going to see there's like a specific email address for the student advice service. They are just there for like this sort of uh, query. So anything that you want to ask about your personal circumstance, um, um, the sort of like fees uh, that, that will involve your course, they are the ones to, to ask and they will provide a particular advice uh, for your case. And there's also a form for any sort of finance student inquiry. There's a, also a lot of other resources there um, that you can check and hopefully will that will benefit um, you as well. But yeah, that's that's all I can say there because yeah, things have changed quite a lot and they are just the team up to date with all the information that you'll need to to sort out any queries on that front. My colleague just posted the, the email on the chat. So yeah, feel free to reach out to them. They're super responsive and they'll get back to your case as soon as they can, for sure. Amazing. Okay, then we've got eight minutes left, so we still have some time to go through a few questions here. So let's see, what do we have here? Um, let me just have a quick look. Awesome. So we've got this one about what jobs will I get after graduating with creative computing? So maybe Stacy, <laughs> you could tell us a little bit about where you're heading now that you're that you've graduated. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of jobs you can get after um, graduating. Uh, I have found that on LinkedIn, I do get a lot of messages from people regarding that they've seen that I've done creative computing. So it's definitely helped. And I think any job that you go for now, from my experience, any kind of like even if it is just basic HTML, CSS, little bits of coding experience, it's only ever an asset. Um, I've now just got a job in um, a laser cutting studio, so I'm not gonna be doing any coding, but it's still kind of like a more digital practice, which if a couple of years ago, I thought I would have been doing anything digitally related, I wouldn't have thought I would. So um, doing this has kind of definitely steered me in a different, direction but I mean the possibilities are endless there's so many different jobs out there um but yeah I mean doing it just kind of adds to your skill set really even if it's just in a very basic way thank you Stacey lovely someone else would like to add something in there sure yeah I mean there's a whole host of things you can get into on the diploma. It really is throwing you in a bit of the deep end. Uh, it's an intensive course, as I think Finn and Naomi can probably attest to. Um, but you get a whole host of different programming languages you're going to be exposed to, like JavaScript, but also like Python, uh, C++ with Arduino. And as you kind of gain familiarity with these, you'll see different ways in which these can materialize, whether it's to do with research, uh, and how it fits into maybe a kind of digital humanities postgraduate path. You might end up becoming a researcher. You might be, end up working at an app development studio or in a design studio, creating interactive prototypes for them with the work you do on the Swift unit. Um, you might end up creating hardware uh, and working with other artists 
to facilitate, you know, large scale exhibitions or interactive displays. Uh, there's really just, uh, as Stacey said, there's kind of a whole range of things you can get into, and it's only a benefit to know a little bit about each of them. Lovely. Thank you, Murad. I do think also that on the flip side of kind of the um, skills basis of like obviously coding languages um, and those kind of, I guess, more pra practical skills, I think the the theoretical and analytical work that we've done so far has been really really helpful to me and I think in terms it's really changed how I think about the kind of work that I'd like to do um I think especially in graphic design there's sort of this energy that everything has to be sellable <laughs> um and this has really changed changed the way I think about like creating work um and I talked about like open source stuff and that kind of thing but I think it's it's changed the framework of like oh I can get paid to do stuff and make enough money to live without actively selling something that I'm making. Um, and like, I work with Tech Yard who uh, were in Jordina's presentation earlier, which obviously we work with um, young people in Southwark. Um, and it's wild for me that like, oh, this is something that I get paid for and I really enjoy it. I'm not actively selling something, like I'm just helping these kids learn how to code some. <laughs> um, so I think that's something also valuable that it's not just the technical work, the the analytical work I think will play into the kind of jobs that I get um, regardless of becoming like an academic or a researcher like it will play into the kind of things I think you choose. Thank you Finn, it was great to hear. Lovely and as we move towards the end of the session I think we're gonna finish off the event with this question over here, which I would love to hear from each one of you, <laughs> if you feel like sharing. Um, yeah, Matthew, do you want to start? What is the CCI community like? Gosh, um, I've been, I think this is my third year now with CCI and, and I've been working here in various different capacities. And it really is the community that makes me want to stay here all the time and, and find different ways to stay embedded within CCI. Um, it's, it's, I mean, on one hand, it's a very friendly, approachable community, very inclusive, diverse, and extremely uh, approachable. Uh, so no matter what your background or, or or what you know whether you're a student or a tutor everyone's quite happy to have a chat and socialize with you um and it's also a very intelligent group of people so you just have really rewarding conversations and you might be stood over the kettle having a discussion around machine learning or nfts or or, or you know there's always something to to stimulate you at cci so that's my takeaway from being at cci thank you matthew Stacey, do you want to go next? Yeah, I mean, I think you pretty much covered everything there. It is, it is like a really nice community. And for me, it was like the first chance to ever sort of work with anyone from across all the UAL colleges. So I think that's the nicest thing as well, because there's people I still speak to um, who are doing different projects and stuff. And like having those connections is really, really valuable. So yeah, it's good. Thank you, Stacey. Maura? Yeah, I think I, all I can do is agree. You know, I think everyone really has a similar experience here and whatever background you come from, whatever your interests were beforehand, I think there's something for you at CCI. People will really do a lot to kind of help you feel accommodated and to get involved with everything. There's so much going on. There's so many inspiring people. I think you kind of can't help but get caught up in it. So I think it's a very exciting community to be part of. Thank you, Murad. Naomi, do you want to share something there as well? Yeah, for me, I think it's like a foundation phase and people are very kind and lovely. And I think the course is more like um, Joe will teach us PFLGS from scratch and Mac will take us through the class to work on little Arduino projects. And you can always ask questions. And also on Fridays, Mura will explain the principles and use use of some really powerful AI or algorithms. <laughs> yeah, that's very helpful. Thank you, Naomi. Finn, you're next. 
Yeah, I think it's just people. People are really nice and very clever. <laughs> um, and I think also it's cool having, it's lots of different types of clever. Like some people are really technically excellent. Some people are really, really great researchers or like excellent uh, like thinkers. Um, I mean, the environment is just really lovely. I mean, I was absolutely determined to leave the UK for my masters and I'm thinking like, oh damn, I might stay at CCI. Um, mostly I think because the, the, um, the ethical drive of the college is, is really, really strong. Um, and I think so often in tech, there is a lack of that. And it's kind of like, oh, make as much money as you can, go work for Facebook and sell your soul. And like, nothing really matters, it's just tech. Whereas that's not really the reality. And I think having a course that's driven by like, oh, the things that we do have actions and consequences, and maybe we should look into that before we start doing stuff um, is really, really good, especially on the theoretical side of like, we as designers are responsible for the things that we create. And especially now when like, things like AI are kind of, like machine learning is unregulated. So the rules are literally being written as we're making stuff. Um, so it feels like a really uh, exciting and interesting time to be getting into these fields, even if it's just like a sideline of your main practice, um, because so much is changing. And I think that's really exciting. Um, and I think we are very lucky at CCI to have lots of really incredible practitioners, both in our teaching staff and the student body who are doing really, really exciting stuff. Um, in lots of different fields. Um, so I feel really lucky to be kind of around all these folks who are very, very clever. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you, Fien. Well, we made it to the end of the session. So I'm just gonna say huge thank you to Matthew, Stacy, Murat, Naomi, Fien for joining us and sharing your experience and sharing all about the course in this online space today. And to everyone watching, we couldn't cover all the questions that we had, but we almost did it. But yeah, we encourage you to just drop us an email at cci at arts.ac.uk and we'll get back to you as soon as we can um, for your specific queries. So yeah, our inbox is always open, so feel free to, to reach out. But overall, I hope it, it was an insightful and useful uh, session and that all your main questions about the course, the Diploma in Creative Computing and CCI were answered. And hopefully, yeah, we look forward to hearing from you, hopefully meeting you in real life very soon. And in the meantime, yeah, we're going to keep the conversation going online. Thanks everyone for, for joining us today. Hope you have a lovely evening wherever you are in the world. <laughs> and take care. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>